Welcome to the MSD Animal Health Partners in Reproduction series. This series we will be talking to industry experts to bring you the latest information on all aspects of achieving a successful breeding. Today we're here in Lyons Estate joined by Professor Finbar Mulligan of UCD and today we're going to talk about preparations in advance of breeding. So Finbar, to, to start, we might start with a simple question. Why is fertility important? Well, fertility is extremely important for dairy farmer profitability and um, Chagas released a figure some time ago um, whereby we have a target uh, calving down rate of 90% for any dairy herd in the country. Now it costs approximately eight euros for every cow in the herd for every percent that a farmer fails to meet that target. And the current stats from ICBF would indicate that in fact nationally we have a six week calving down rate in spring of approximately 66%. So it's very easy for the loss in profitability arising to poor fertility to amount to 19 to 20,000 euros for a typical 100 cow herd. So that's why fertility is so important. And fertility, um, Finbar, there's, it's multifactorial. It's not just one thing or another. So for farmers now, how can they work at preparing their herd to, to maximize the success or to get the most successful breeding for them? It's absolutely right. There are several key elements involved in a good fertility performance. So animal health um, has to be good. Management has to be good. Management of the breeding season, heat detection being organized. Uh, the genetics has to be good. So for example, you need the herd to be, you know, at least in the top 20% for fertility sub-index on the EBI and preferably even better than that on fertility sub-index. So there are many things that need to be pointing in the right direction, health, management, genetics, and nutrition is also one of those things that needs to be pointing in the right direction for a good fertility performance. What can farmers do in a yard where they are coming under pressure in terms of having enough silage? If you think you're going to be under pressure for having enough silage, the first thing to do is to identify that early and then, and then to consider you know, a strategy around it. Um, if you're going to be in the shed and we can't predict the weather over the next three, two to three weeks, that's the reality. Is it, a, is it a possibility to buy in some silage in your locality? If not, would it be possible to buy in some straights? Um, something like rolled barley, you know, might be used as a good energy supplement at this time of the year. It's easy to store on the farm and it should be available. But in terms of body condition scoring, identifying animals that maybe have had problems around calving, I suppose what are the simplest steps farmers can do now? The first thing is to identify any cows in the herd that might be thin. And it's extremely important to remember, you know, dairy cows that are thin, they're at a bigger risk of a fertility problem. It's as simple as that. But also dairy cows that are thin, they're at inc an increased risk of lameness. So we like to try and give those cows a benefit. And this cow right behind you here, Jack, farmers should look through their herd for cows like this as candidates uh, that are too thin. So how do we know this cow is too thin? We see her short ribs here without any difficulty and particularly we see uh, the first and second one of her short ribs here sticking right out at us. So she has a very, very poor area here in her short ribs, mm. not much flesh, very obvious hollows. You see this extreme V-shape here after her hook bone and the point of her femur sticking out. So this animal is very low in body condition score, probably two and a quarter at most. And for cows like this at Lions Farm, we put these cows onto once a day yeah. milking. Yeah. And that once a day milking reduces their energy output by reducing milk production by about 20 to 25%. Now it's important when you put them on once a day milking, remember you still need to feed them twice a day to give the benefit to their energy balance. A cow with a poor energy balance, remember, will also have a, pure, a poor immune system competence. We want these cows to go back and calf we want them to have a nice, clean uterus. Fimbar, we've just talked through a tin animal, an individual tin animal, but if a farmer looks through their herd and actually sees that, well, I've nearly 20, 25%, what's that saying to you? That's saying that the herd in general are underfed. So if you see, for example, you know, one or two thin cows in a herd, we would normally have a threshold of 10% that's forgivable mm. on body condition score issues. So you'd be hoping if you had 10 uh, thin cows in any particular farm, there might be a reason for that. Mm. So for example, the cow might have an ongoing heart problem, the cow might have an ongoing lameness problem. And my advice, if the low body condition score group is 10% or less, get your vet to go through those individuals with a fine tooth comb and see if there is a problem rumbling on. If you're talking 25% or more, 
of the herd being thin, well to me that's a herd problem and you need to review your feeding levels and that's back to the calculation. With the amount of grass I'm expecting my cows to consume, with their current level of milk production, are they fed a diet that will support 100% of their energy requirement? Let's just take animals that had difficult calvings, retained uh, cleanings, um, maybe even twins and so on, downer cows. What can farmers actively do with those animals to ensure that they have the best chance of going in calf again? Uh, I think very, very important that they would have a pre-breeding exam mm. uh, and that that pre-breeding exam would happen on time. So for example, for us here at Lions Farm this year, it's likely our mating start date will be the 22nd of April. So we'd like their pre-breeding exam to be, you know, roughly around the 20th of March, about a month before your mating start date. So you'll have enough cows calve to make it worthwhile, but also you have enough time maybe to do something about any problems that those individuals have. It's important for farmers to actually check through records, identify animals, work with your vet, yeah. work with those uh, to try and bring those problem animals back right. Well, technology like SenseHub is fantastic because it enables a farmer, you know, to make a call on uh, pre-breeding um, bulling activity. Correct. So if there's plenty of bulling activity going on, that can be determined um, using technology like SenseHub mm. during a time when you likely still have cows calving. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Before you need to get into serious heat detection, if you like, for the actual breeding season. Yeah. But as well, it's also important to work with your vet to ensure that from an infectious diseases point of view, uh, that those, you're up to date on your vaccination protocol, typically your BVDs, your leptospirosis, IBRs, salmon, the list kind of goes on. But again, just encourage farmers to work with your vet to have that one ticked off. So my final question then, Finbar, is what supplementation would animals need as they move from silage and transition out to grass and, and move from you know, calving down to ramping up to, to peak milk and into breeding? Well, we looked at this actually uh, quite recently, and it's amazing, you know, if you have a 70 DMD grass silage, which won't be that far off the average quality mm. silage in the country, and your herd has a milk fat of 3.8%, which is actually conservative, you'd hope they'd have higher fat in the milk than that. With 12 kilos of silage intake, um, even for 28 litres of milk, it doesn't be long before the herd will need approximately 8 kilos or even 9 kilos of concentrate. Mm. So farmers need to be realistic. If they're in a silage scenario, Silage is not the same as fresh grass from the point of view of energy and they do need higher levels of feed when they're on a silage diet. Mm. So that eight kilos is something that people should keep in mind. Are my herd fed sufficiently uh, when they're in the silage feeding period? As we move out to grass then, and particularly when we get into a situation where high grass intakes are possible, of course it's possible to reduce concentrate supplementation rates. However, people need to remember to base their feeding plans on the energy requirement of the cow. And generally speaking, cows need six UFLs just to maintain themselves and approximately 0.47 UFLs per kilo of milk, just short of a half a UFL per kilo of milk. So a cow producing 28 litres will need approximately 13 UFLs for the milk and six UFLs for herself. And that's 19 UFLs. For argument's sake, if your herd is achieving a grass intake of uh, 14 kilos, mm -hmm. that's about 14 UFLs mm -hmm. and you need another 5 kilos then to come from the supplement. So I would encourage farmers to do their own figures based on their own current milk yield on the 17th of March or on the 1st of April. But make sure you feed them to requirement. People often make the mistake of thinking, you know, I'll, I'll skimp on the feed. But normally, you know, when milk prices are good, dairy cows will return a good profitability mm -hmm. and um, they'll be able to pay uh, for the feed that they do require at that time. At this point, I'd like to close today's video. I'd like to thank Professor Finbar Mulligan of UCD. We've had a great discussion and chat. I suppose the key messages for farmers is to start taking a bit of action now. Um, tune in to our second video where we'll discuss technology for optimum fertility performance.